Hey guys, welcome back to Now I Know. Today we are seeing the structure of antibody and all the different terms related to antibody structure and why are they named so. So let's begin today's video. Now first thing first, antibody we know is a proteinic compound and we are producing antibody or we synthesize antibody in response to foreign antigen. That means antibody is produced in our body to fight against the foreign antigen and we know that antibodies are very specific to a particular type of antigen. What, what type of antigen that it has encountered accordingly very specific antibodies will be produced by our B cells. To be more specific plasma B cells, right? Right, so antibody is a proteinic compound that is produced to fight against the foreign antigen. Now proteinic compound to be little more specific antibodies are globular protein with immune function isn't it? That is why they are also called immunoglobulins right. They are the globular protein antibodies are the globular protein with immune function that is fighting against foreign antigen and that is why they are also called immunoglobulins. So there you go. You know I might switch between antibody or immunoglobulin essentially they mean the same thing. Now you know why it is called immunoglobulin also. So let's jump to the structure. So when we say structure of antibody this Y shape looking thing comes in our mind right. So this is the structure of a typical antibody one molecule of antibody. Now let's see all the parts one by one and try and understand why are they named so and so. So as you can see antibody we know is made up of heavy chain and light chain. This over here you can see this is the heavy chain one heavy chain. This is the second heavy chain. This small one is the light chain and this one is also light chain. So it is made up of two heavy chains and two light chains right. Now they are called heavy chain or light chain because of their molecular weight. Okay, uh, Heavy chain of course is heavy in molecular weight that is 50 kilo Dalton is the molecular weight of each heavy chain. Okay, I am talking about one single heavy chain is 50 kilo Dalton whereas the light chain is 25 kilo Dalton. Alright, each light chain weighs 25 kilo Dalton and each heavy chain weighs 50 kilo Dalton. Thus they are called heavy chain and light chain. So if I take the molecular weight of one single molecule of antibody, it should be 25 plus 25 plus 50 plus 50 that is 150 kilo Dalton. Remember I'm talking about one single molecule of antibody that means if I'm talking about IgM or IgA their molecular weight will be more than 150 kilo Dalton because IgM is pentamer and IgA is dimer okay. So one single molecule of antibody is 150 kilo Dalton. So one more thing we can see over here is heavy chain can be either mu, gamma, alpha delta or epsilon all right any one of these five heavy chain can be present and based on what heavy chain is present it determines the type of antibody that means if heavy chain mu is present that means it is IgM okay if mu is present it is IgM if gamma is present it is IgG. If alpha is present, it is IgA, it is IgD and the last one is epsilon. If epsilon is present, it is IgE. Now here I will give you one trick as on like how you can remember or understand that what heavy chain is giving rise to what antibody. Mu starts with M so it gives rise to IgM. Gamma starts with G so it gives rise to IgG. Alpha starts with A so it gives rise to IgA. Delta starts with D it gives rise to IgD. And epsilon starts with E so it gives rise to IgE. Other way around you know you're talking about IgM which heavy chain so it's mu. IgG, gamma and so on. So it's easy to remember you know just look at the first letter and you know what antibody each heavy chain produces. 
now what is this when it comes to light chain it can be either kappa or lambda any one of the light chain will be present in any of these five antibodies okay now just come to this uh, chains again you can see here in heavy chain as well as light chain this first half is labeled as vh and vl this v means it is a variable region and the term simply is because of the high variability of amino acid sequence present in these region so it is a variable heavy chain variable light chain accordingly they are labeled vh or vl similarly the other uh, subunits are cl and ch labeled as cl or ch that c stands for constant region because there is no high variability or there is no much change in the amino acid sequence of antibody so it is called as constant region so this region is constant heavy or constant light region now in this uh, variable region is where the antigen binding site reside okay that is where the antigen binding site is present it is not that the whole antibody can recognize the antigen it is only specific amino acid sequence in this variable region which can recognize the antigen and those specific amino acid sequence are called as cdr which stands for complementarity determining region this cdr is present only in this variable region that is also called as para top right we say para top of antibody binds to epitope of antigen this is the bacteria this is one particular epitope that is recognized by the para top that is the cdr region now we know what is cdr specific amino acid sequence that are present in this variable region that recognizes and binds with the antigen we can also see site of glycosylation in the antibody you know what is the need of the, these glycosylation sites in the antibody now there is no exact reason we know why this glycosylation might be there but one of the uh, possible reason says that uh, we know that antibody is a protein compound and because it's a protein compound it might have a lot of hydrophobic amino acids present in it and you know because of these hydrophobic amino acid the solubility of antibody reduces in the blood plasma so what glycosylation does is of course glycosylation increases the solubility so that might be one of the reason why there are glycosylation present in the antibody that it increases the solubility of antibody so that it can be soluble in the blood plasma now next we know that this upper region of this antibody this portion is called as fab region and this region over here is called as fc region we know that so why are they named so why are they labeled so so what happens is uh, when this antibody structure was being studied uh, the antibodies were digested with different enzymes now when the antibody was digested this upper portion of the antibody found to be binding with the antigen okay there was binding with the antigen only by this upper portion and thus it is labeled fab meaning f is for fragment a is for antigen and b is for binding the fragment that binds with the antigen is called fab fragment antigen binding and the fc stands for fragment crystallizable and this was because when they stored this fragment it started crystallizing okay just because of that it was named as fc that is fragment crystallizable and at the last we can see over here the hinge region now the hinge region we know gives the flexibility to antibody so that it can bind in the best way possible with the antigen okay it gives the flexibility to the antibody to bind with the antigen so that's all you know when we talk about antibody structure overview we commonly talk about all these labels and all these terms and i hope this video made it uh, clear to understand why are they named so or what each term means so that's all for now i hope this video was helpful 
Do subscribe to the channel for new video every week and I'll see you next time. Until then, keep learning.